skin, melanin, beauty. Thick in all the right places. Our age doesn't show in our faces. They say black don't crack. So at 65, we look 45. And honey, for us, 40 is the new 20. At least that's what the outer image says. But inside tells another story. In an attempt to live up to expectations of strength, we hide our tears. We dare not speak of our fears. As our bodies slowly creep internally toward a biological clock, we wonder, will we have that baby? Find that mate? Finally remove these burdens off our plate? Or is it too late? We are constantly seeking to stand out while not appearing to stand by. Always ready to stand up, we pretend like our cup never runneth over. We gotta stay woke, heard, respected, calm, hyped, ready to fight for man, woman, and child. It's wild. We tell our baby girls they are beautiful, but when they see mommy hating herself, that's the truth they keep. Ain't that deep? Our actions don't match our words, so commendation goes unheard. We duplicate the same self-hate covered up with fake smiles. Black don't cry, but the weight on our backs what women inspired me well I come from a long line of very strong women who were the epitome of courage compassion creativity always finding a way to make a way out of no way. When asked to think about women who inspire me, there's two. They both have the same name, it's Harriet. One is my mom. She, like many of her generation, was a young mom, eventually becoming a young single mom. She made choices, though tough, that allowed her to demonstrate to us a strong spiritual legacy, strong work ethic, and that sticks with me to this day. And then there were women like Shirley Chisholm, uh, Barbara Jordan, who as a young girl I watched on black and white TV, and they were challenging the status quo, embracing what was possible, even though at the time it seemed impossible. Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress, has inspired me to be fearless and to have guts. And I'm so excited to share how she, along with so many other black women in our history, have impacted me. Hey everybody, I am so excited about our coffee and tea conversation. Oh my goodness, I have been waiting for this moment and I'm so happy to have these beautiful women here that are gonna talk about just our experiences with celebrating being a woman. And of course it's Women's History Month. So yes, let's just get the conversation going. So again, of course, you know, I'm Lita, as I said. <laughs> 
but let's get uh, introduce the panel. So I'm going to start with Stacy. Stacy, introduce yourself for us. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be a part of this group of women inspiring and refreshing others. My name is Stacy Tucker. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I help women um, realize their dreams through successful wealth building and legacy planning so as to um, leave something for themselves as well as for the next generation. Awesome. Welcome to the conversation. And I'm just going to go right on down the line. So I have Miss Carolyn joining the conversation. Miss Carolyn, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, absolutely. And I really applaud you, Lita, for coordinating this event. It's just such an honor to be a part of such established and successful women. So uh, after decades of working in corporate America and also most recently in a philanthropy job, I have rebooted myself as a fashion model, a writer, and an aspiring kickboxer. I'm challenging the perception of what it's like to be a 74 year old black woman today. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's move on down. We have got Brittany, mover shaker. Brittany, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, ladies. Hi, Lita. I'm Brittany Vinay. I'm the owner of Vinay Virtual Business Solutions, where I'm a brand and website designer for awesome small business owners who need help building a cohesive brand and digital presence. Yes, ma'am. I love it. I love it. And last but certainly not least, we have the mover shaker, Nia Mobley, joining us. Tell us about yourself, Nia. Hi, ladies. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this panel. I'm so excited to be here with you all. Um, my name is Nia Mobley. I am owner of Salman Sanai. We are a, a curated gift box for children ages six months to 12 years old. Uh, our boxes come in subscription form for a year or six months, and we also uh, sell one-time gift boxes as well. So happy to be here. Yay. All right. And I'm sure we're all going to talk more as we go along about just the things we do. But again, as I mentioned, it is Women's History Month and so many women have paved the way for us. So we're going to start off the conversation by ladies. Let's talk about. Oh, and oh, by the way, do we have our coffee? Do we have our coffee mugs? Because we are having our coffee and tea conversation. <laughs> Yes. All right. So let's talk about who inspires us. So Stacey, I'm going to start back with you. Who has inspired you and tell us why? So that's a good one. And it's an easy one. So there are two women, they both have the same name. And um, as I put in my video, it's Harriet. So my mom, um, like many of her generation was a young mom. Um, very shortly thereafter, she became a young single mom. But what inspires me about her is that she never became dependent, not on any human anyway. She developed a, a strong faith in God and she laid that as a foundation for us. Um, what she did depend on was the community. Back then, your neighbors, people you could trust would watch your children. And she instilled in me a work ethic that is absolutely incredible. Like she could have so easily fallen dependent upon social systems and I need a hand out or up or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that if you need it, but she just demonstrated that as a young African-American woman of that decade in that era, she could press on and raise strong, spiritually grounded and you know um, morally grounded um, uh, children that became adults. The other one is um, Harriet Tubman. She, she's, a, she's a model for many people. She was born right in Maryland, not that far from here. And the, the reason I'm interested in her is not so much the slavery narrative, but the freedom narrative, um, someone of such stature with so many odds stacked against her took the, uh, the, the, the gumption, you could say, to just, to just move on and deliver not just herself from bondage, but others. And she said, many are familiar with the quote where she said, I could have saved so many more if they knew they were slaves. Mm -hmm. It's true today too. So many people are in bondage financially and in other ways. And so I've kind of made it a mission of mine to follow in footsteps like hers to help people um, free themselves, so to speak, from uh, the, the challenges of, of moving forward in a financial way. Yeah, wow. You know what? I really love that. And, and, and that's really the part of honoring the reason why we really honor these women, right? Because 
it, it shows us it can be done. And knowing you personally and knowing how important it is for you and how passionate you are about, like you said, freeing women, small business owners from financial slavery, you know, and, and the struggle of, of, of not being able to, you know, take care of yourself financially. I know that you have been inspired by both of them. And of course, knowing your mom, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Wow. Awesome. Well, let's move on and talk more about our inspirations. Nia, what about you? What about you? Who inspires you? Well, I had to follow Stacy, um, my mother as well. She was a serial entrepreneur. Um, growing up, she always worked a, a nine to five, but she turned her hobbies into passion works. Um, it was, she had a bath and body uh, line. She uh, sold purses and hats and we would be just walking around the town and we would see people with her fashions on. We would go to people's houses and we would see her bath and body line in their bathrooms. And it just always made me so proud. She also had a uh, consignment shop um, when I was in middle school. So I learned how to do inventory. I even learned how to do the cash register. So I mean, it was just awesome watching her uh, just fulfill her passions and go out there and strive and um, make these these hobbies into, into real entrepreneurial pursuits. Wow. Um, my second person would be Miss Tabitha Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, she's my crush. She's my woman crush. I love her so much. Um, from the first day I saw her eat that sandwich from Whole Foods. <laughs> I was like, this lady is crazy. I need to follow her. She cracks me up. Yes. Um, and I have, I've been following her and her story and how she uh, has always wanted to be a successful actress. Um, and she's, she's had uh, stabs at it, but no really big come up. And I think it's just so inspiring how she just put herself out there to the world yeah. and spoke her truth. And just to see it all come back to her is just so wonderful. She also um, featured our business. Yes. So like my best friend in my head. That's what I, I texted to her. I said, Neil, you're my best friend in my head. But uh, yeah, she she's just awesome. And I, I just love uh, the example that she's showing to just go ahead and strive and work for yours. Yeah. But she's also not selfish with it. She's very selfless with it, which is the key. That balance right there is the key. You know, I, I can really appreciate what you're saying. And what I love about her as well is just, she is so comfortable with just giving you who she is. And I love that. I think so many of us need to really think about that. You know, we try to just go through all these hoops sometimes and pretend we're something that we're not, but just be who we are. And if we're authentic, people are going to, they're going to be people that are going to buy into that. I love it. Love it. Wow. Thank you for sharing. All right. Miss Carolyn, who inspires you? <laughs> Well, thanks. You know, um, as I mentioned in the video, uh, I come from a long, long line of very, very, very strong women who were not only compassionate, but also courageous and very, very, very creative. Had to be creative, in, you know, in Jim Crow in the South where I grew up. Um, uh, for example, my grandmother, uh, challenge the status quo by being a woman who could manage single-handedly uh, a working farm. Um, my mother, uh, who also was very, very, very strong, a woman of the church who, you know, who led many different uh, protests. And um, so, yeah, they were challenging the status quo. And, you know, then as a girl growing up watching black and white TV, <laughs> I um, first saw like Barbara Jordan on um, TV and was so impressed by her oratory style. And she paved the way, was like the first African-American woman uh, in the state of Texas to be, uh, not, to be into in the United, uh, well, in the Texas Senate. And I remember seeing her on, um, 
TV, I think it was like 72 or something, where she was the keynote speaker at the Democratic Convention and just really, really, really knocked the socks off of everybody. She was very, very, very well spoken. Her mom had been a public speaker. And I just saw that as, um, you know, something to emulate. And then again, there was Shirley Chisholm about the same time who decided that she was going to run for president. And that was absolutely unheard of. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, she didn't make it, but she demonstrated to the world how you could have a vision for what's seemingly um, impossible, but, you know, absolutely is possible. So I think I've been inspired mostly by women who challenge what the perceptions are of what a woman, especially a black woman, should be. And that motivates me every day to keep going and be persistent in achieving the goals I'm achieving. Wow, wow. And you know, one thing I can say, it, it's common. Everyone is saying the same things. The, the people who inspired us, we really are stepping up and walking kind of in their same path. And Miss Carolyn, with you, you know how much I love you. <laughs> And I can see, I, as you were talking, I'm like, wow, she's actually describing the moves that she's making and the steps she's taking. Uh -huh. So I, I can really appreciate that. Uh -huh. I, I, I really can. Wow. Well, we have not forgotten about Miss Britt. Miss Britt, who inspires you? Lita, as I've mentioned in my video, Shirley Chisholm, she inspired me so much. Growing up, I was a natural born leader. And unfortunately in my school system, they didn't teach us much about black history. Um, and I have to attribute the knowledge that I have so much of it to my grandmother who made it her initiative to make sure that I knew about my history and where I came from. And so growing up in school, I would research and study. And when I came across Shirley Chisholm and her leadership, I was amazed and I, I would run for student government and I would take on any role that I can in school, in my community. And I just ran with it. And I keep that near and dear to me to this day. I'm so grateful for, you know, my grandmother, for teaching me, you know, the importance of my history. And, and through that, I was able to see so many prolific women um, who inspired me from Ruby D with creativity and art and Maya Angelou and Nikki Giovanni, you know, through language, Oprah through business. And I take a little bit from everyone and I use that in everything that I do. And, and I most importantly want to make my ancestors proud and the black women who've come before me. And um, I feel so good knowing that I can take the example that they set for me mm -hmm. and apply it to my life. Wow, mm, sis. You said a word with that. <laughs> and you know what? Every, all the women that you all have mentioned, you know, I, I'll just chime in and say, you know, they, they set the bar so high, but I have to, you know, for having this conversation, I have to definitely include, you know, my grandmother, my mother, of course, you know, everyone knows I wrote about them in my book, Celebrating a Legacy. But, you know, it, I just really have to speak on the, the, what they showed, um, showing up every day. You know, my grandmother was someone who literally worked hard up until she retired and continued to work hard in the home at 97 is still, you know, kicking and doing her thing, um, owned her own houses, all of that. And so what it really showed me was you have to just show up. Uh, people aren't going to give you favors. People aren't going to, you know, give you a lot of things. You have to go out there and you have to take it. And of course, my mom being a single parent mother, kind of like what Stacy was talking about, you know, my mom didn't have necessarily a lot to offer, but the fundamental things, faith, you know, uh, believing in yourself, believing that, you know, you can dream and you can accomplish those dreams. Those are things that my mom passed on to me and inspired me. So, um, I love it. This is just such a, it's such a feel good moment thinking about these women, um, especially as again, we celebrate women this month and the history of women, such an amazing conversation, but 
let's switch it up a little bit because yes, these women have been amazing. They have set the bar for us, but now let's talk about each one of us. I know a lot of women and and I, I wish I could have had so many women join this conversation, but I really specifically wanted you all because in each one of you in your lives and the things that you're doing, you are changing the game you are also taking that baton and carrying it to the next level. Mm. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how are you showing up and changing history and raising the bar? So I'm going to start with Miss Carolyn this time. <laughs> so just kind of a lead in. I can remember my mom and my aunt saying things like, you know, you can make a way out of no way. And um I feel that's exactly what I am doing. When I retired a few years ago, it was really evident to me that um, you could very easily become invisible as a 70 year old retiree because people have just moved on. You know, your kids are gone, you don't have a job. So I did a little research because I noticed that people were kind of ignoring me and I uh, discovered that it's very common, it's very common at a certain age, you're really not, people have low expectations of you and what you can accomplish. And in researching, I realized that 70% um, of women don't see themselves represented in advertising. So if you don't see yourself, you know, the question is, are you visible? Mm. And um, this was a study that was done for Dove by Edelman Associates. And also that 4% of the women interviewed said that they don't feel that they are beautiful. So I wrote an article for AARP called, I Refuse to Be Invisible. And they picked it up, published it, and um, encouraged me because of the photos that I sent that I should try modeling, which was, what kind of got me on my path. And so I feel that I am hopefully changing history, at least changing the perception of what beauty is, yeah. you know, what standards um, are being set and uh, encouraging other women. This is the most important part of it for me is encouraging other women to step it up, embrace, fashion, embrace style, and add more swagger. Yes, yes. More <laughs> swagger to their, to their lives as a way to be more, more socially engaged with other people. So with the um, modicum of success that I've had so far, I do think it's possible, you know, to challenge the perceptions and to try to stamp out the ageism that exists. I love that. And Yes, that is truly raising the bar because even now it still is, you just said it, you just, you just showed the receipts, you know, it still is a challenge with people not seeing themselves represented in the media, in entertainment, in these different forums. And like you said, how can we not feel um, invisible, you know, if we don't see ourselves or when we are portrayed, we're not beautiful and sassy and swagger and all that, then we're not, we, how can we feel that we are? So yes, Ms. Carolyn, I love it. I, and I, and thank you for raising the bar and, and changing the game. <laughs> so, you know, I think that it's also, there is a little bit more awareness about racial diversity, even though it's still not where it should be. Yeah. What I'm struggling with is, can we see more age diversity? Yes, that's, you're right. You're right. I'm with it. I'm with you there. <laughs> All right, Miss Brittany, what about you? What are you, how are you showing up, changing the game, raising the bar? Tell us. Well, Lita, as a mompreneur, <laughs> that yes. I call myself a mompreneur unicorn, I'm showing up for women everywhere, who have goals and who have dreams and don't necessarily think that they're possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so happy that I can help women to see that you can be who you always wanted to be because that's exactly what I'm doing for myself yeah. as a 
former stay-at-home mom, now almost divorced mompreneur, I woke up one day and decided that I was going to be who I always wanted to be. Mm. And it's a blessing to be able to start a business with skills that were not used in corporate America. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that I, you know, I'd, I'd earned these degrees. I went to college and, you know, worked in corporate America and I still was, I wasn't satisfied. Um, and I took the skills that I had and I learned skills I never thought I would. And I learned to monetize them. Mm. And I want to continue to help other women, whether they are stay-at-home moms, they are current mompreneurs, we're working in corporate Americas, college students, no matter where they are in their life, I want to help them to understand that if you have skills, if you have hobbies, you can monetize them and I'm going to help you do it and it's going to look good because I'm designing <laughs> all of your stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, oh my goodness. So I got goosies while you were talking and I felt myself getting emotional and I'm going to do my best this conversation, not to get emotional, but I am a very big baby, but I just have to say, Britt, the reason why it touched me so much is because so many women do not understand that even with challenges, like you said, you know, you've had some personal challenges that, you know, they, they can, they can be difficult, right? You know, when you're, when you're dealing with those type of things, but you looked yourself in the, in the eye and you said, you know what, who says I can't do this? Who says I have to be a victim of what's happening mm. in my life right now? You did it. And you were like, I, what I say is that I am not a victim and I'm not only going to change the game for myself, but I'm going to help other women change the game. Yeah. I'm getting goosies again. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And that's exactly what the women that we talked about in the beginning, that's exactly what they did. They weren't necessarily thinking they were going to win awards or be in people's books. They were just showing up saying, you know what, I am going to make a difference for myself and others. And that's exactly what you ladies are doing. Mm. Woo, okay. I'm getting myself excited. All right. Who is next? <laughs> Nia, 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 you are next. Tell us how you are changing the game, how you are showing up and raising the bar. Hey, wow, that, that's a loaded question. I can tell you my attempt at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, for one, uh, I've made it clear that um, I wanted to include other women in our company. Um, other women who have small businesses, who um, are makers, who may have passion projects, such as my mother, I wanted to focus on featuring uh, these businesses and within our boxes. Of course, our boxes are geared to children, um, but those children have parents. Um, and so not all of these uh, women entrepreneurs that we do feature, and when I say feature, we feature their products that they make um, in our box. So I, I will purchase, you know, we partner and I'll purchase their products and include them in our subscription boxes that we send out to our subscribers. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I just feel that that not only empowers them, but it also empowers myself because you just want to pull along other women who you see are, you know, just trying to make a way, just trying to figure something out, trying to fulfill a passion, trying to, uh, you know, just find um, something you unique within themselves to share with the world. Yeah. And um, that's our goal. So each box, I make sure, I research, I call around, and um, I purchase items from these uh, women who have small owned businesses. Even if it's catered to adults, I make it fit. Like yes. for instance, <laughs> there's a, a friend of mine who sells jewelry for adult women. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I support her for myself. I have her earrings on right now. Um, and uh, her company is Zen and Thrifty. And I said, you know what? I need you to get me some kids 
earrings, just some studs, you know, the hypoallergenic, you know, just give me something. And she's like, I don't sell children's uh, accessories. I'm like, oh yes, you do. Cause I need you to buy it for me. And I need you to, uh, cause I'm going to feature you in my box. And she's like, oh, you know what? Yes, I do. I do. So, <laughs> yes. <some> accessories. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We feature her twice since. And it's just, you know, it's just, very nice to, to network with these women, to get to know them and to help bring other women up and help them shine as well. Yeah, and you know what I wanna say regarding that, two things. First of all, I talk all the time about real women working together and supporting one another. And I think we all have probably seen examples where that has not happened. And unfortunately, and we could probably spend a, a lot of time talking about that, but, it, it can be a challenge for women to support each other, to look out for the other person, um, especially in our culture. You know, we can see that a lot. It's always this competition or what have you. But what I really appreciated is that Nia, you were like, no, if I'm, if it's about me, it's about we, right? <clears throat> and so I love that you do that. And you even shouted it out. Like, I'm not even just going to tell y'all what I do, but did y'all get the name? <laughs> So I love that. And it, more of us need to really think like that. It's not just, I'm making sure I'm good. It's really about making sure the community of women are good. And again, going back to those people that we named in the beginning, that's what they did. Um, they weren't just looking out for themselves. They were looking yeah. out for the next person. And that's how they really got ahead. And then the second thing I really respect and appreciate, because it reminds me of my mom, I, the fact that, you know, you could have said, well, I'm just going to do a business and it's going to be this or that and blah, blah, blah. But you're like, I'm going to also honor my kids in this business and I'm going to keep them. This business is going to be partly about them. <laughs> it really about them. So I love that. And again, it just shows, you know, for our mompreneurs out there, whichever route you go, you can still even bring in kids in what you're doing and make the business work with the kids. <laughs> So I love that. And, and I have two little girls, but we, you know, we, we center our, our business around little boys as well. So even though it is a company centered around these two little girls, we don't exclude the little boys. Yes. <laughs> you know, our focus is to dress well and to learn well and to have fun. So that's what we do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Now we are on Stacy. Stacy, how are you showing up? changing the game, changing history, raising the bar? Well, <clears throat> I echo the sentiments of the ladies um, that have already spoken. And honestly, just being in this room is already a representation that we are and have raised the bar. So I don't have all the answers, but the answers I do have, I've made it a point to just like everybody else's comments have been to share that with others. Like um, I, in my business, I get to talk with a lot of women who've been like a lot of yourselves, you know, stay at home moms and then transitioning to other forms of motherhood, <clears throat> excuse me. And often women who've been in relationships, married 20, 30 years. And if they're separating, they don't know that much about their finances. And so um, there's not many of us just kind of like you said, Ms. Carol represented in the financial services business who understand you know, how to protect our risk, how to, how to leave a legacy, how to pass wealth on. And so I make sure that every day that I have, I work hard in my business. Some of you know it better than others, but um, so, and I chose businesses that I know people need, have to have, but by their, the nature of their complexity, it makes people run away from them, like real estate or insurance or finances or things like that. And they're so inherent and so important to us being able to do the things you ladies talked about, like change the narrative, change the dynamic, um, get our foot in the door. Sometimes we can't open a business because we got to pay rent, right? So yeah. how do you how do you make that decision? Oh, you got an order, but you can't fulfill it because you've got the car note or things like that. So I've made it a personal mission of mine this year, and I think I said that already to really make sure that I'm talking to and finding avenues and points where I can share that in a way that's meaningful. That's interesting, of course, because finances can be kind of boring, but like to make it interesting enough to make people take action and to do something about it rather than just sit on their hands and go, oh, I don't understand that stuff. I'm not going to do anything about it. So, and also by the nature of my business is that I also employ people. So by doing that, I feel like I'm contributing to 
the community in ways that's unique, that, that's not often always found. And, and it's something I should have been afraid of, but I wasn't. So I did it. Some days I still wonder how it's all going to work out. But so that's the ways I just decided to just step in. Just put, put all the negative aside and just go ahead and do it. And somebody's got to do it. We're not represented that well in this in, in all the industries we've talked about, but in this industry in particular. And so I've just decided I'm going to stay the course. I've just celebrated 10 years on January 1 of this year. And yes. uh, I feel pretty proud of that. Yes, so I plan exactly. to just push forward. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. And, you know, I'll add before we take a, a quick break to to rep- to show our sponsors, um, you know, one thing I have to add about Stacy, I like to Stacy, and you know this, I consider you, I call you like your girlfriend's coach because, <laughs> you know, like you said, finances, and, and again, uh, this could be a bit, a much bigger conversation, um, but growing up, you know, finances, and you've talked about it, Stacey, our relationship with money has so much to do with just our upbringing and what money mm-hmm. represented and all of right. that. But what I will say is, if you ever have an opportunity to talk with Stacy, I don't care if you know you're considering buying a car, you're looking into life insurance, or you're just trying to figure out how to improve some things in your life. Stacy knows how to break this down and explain it to you the way your girlfriend explains it to you or your aunt and them <laughs> explain it to you in a way that makes sense. It's not over your head, but it's it's it makes it where you can do it and you can take those steps to to make the improvements. So Stacy, I have to really say that in itself is game changing, really. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so before we take our break, the last thing I wanted to add um, for me with my natural me with this, this whole event is under um, my mission. And I've said it before, my mission is really to create a space for women and girls to feel honored, empowered, and refreshed in any way that I can do that through events like this, through coaching, through my books. It's That's how I'm showing up to change the game because so many of us have so many reasons why we don't feel honored, why mm-hmm. we don't feel empowered, why we wake up not refreshed. And I have made it one of my goals to really help change that story. So ladies, we doing it. We are doing it. <laughs> So we're going to take a quick break, honor our sponsors, and then when we come back, we're going to start talking about some of the challenges uh, that we have had with our businesses. Okay, we'll be right back. Today's event is being brought to you by Smell of Love Candles. Be sure to use the code STRONGWOMAN and receive a discount off your first purchase today. Also being brought to you by Girani Coffee House, located in Manassas, Virginia, Swing by for your cup of love today. Also, pick up your copy of I Can Fix My by author Lolita Harlem on her website, lolitaharlem.com. All right, we are back. Thank you to those sponsors. Oh my goodness. So we're talking about showing up, changing the game, but of course we cannot have this conversation, right? Without really talking about the challenges that come. So what challenges, ladies? Let's talk about some of the challenges that we've had in our our goals of, of showing up and changing history. Um, Mia, let's start with you for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. So, <clears throat> of course, COVID is everyone's challenge right now, right? The whole world has been influenced by COVID. Um, we had to pivot a lot. Um, And even though we were kind of like COVID proof a little bit, because, you know, it's a subscription box that comes to you. um, And we really want to help parents save time. That's our whole goal, right? Um, Save time with shopping, save time with looking for things for, you know, special events, or just we send regular socks for kids like you know like all kids need socks at all times who knows where the socks go so um we we really had to pivot with our vendors um because uh we we ship every other month we're a bi-monthly box but when march hit and we had to ship that april i was like it's not going to happen march uh 2020 i was like it's there's no way that anything that I purchase is going to 
come to me. Um, and then one day I just had this, you need to look for new vendors, just do it. They're out there, just look, just do the research. And I had to just change that whole way that we had them buying and what, how we've been relying on other vendors. But it's helped so much because we found so many cool vendors. Wow. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. we also wanted to, again, focus on more women um, businesses to feature in our box, boxes. We found so many cool businesses owned by women. I mean, from and we also include an educational piece in our box. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, from like communication cards, teaching children how to communicate about their feelings. I'm like, I need this in my box. You know, <laughs> yeah. I can hit up this woman and I'm like, hey. I love your product. I need it in my box. And, you know, and that was my research, really just looking and then contacting those, those makers, those, those creative minds and, and just introducing myself and saying, we would love to have your, your work in, my, in our box. Mm -hmm. um, we also started doing online events um, because the whole world is virtual. We have these little kids. They need to know how to still um, associate with each other and, you know, not be awkward while doing it. We've done paint parties online. We've done um, story times online featuring uh, women um, authors. Um, so we, we've been just trying to really think outside of the box. <laughs> no pun intended. The box. <laughs> So far, it has been really working um, for us, and I'm just very grateful that every other month we we hit our marks, we make our marks. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I love, you know, like you said, COVID has affected everyone. I mean, it's it's hard to believe that, you know, for many of us, it's now been a year since really things kind of really took a turn, at least in, in our area, you know, it was about March, 2020, when things kind of started closing up and all of that. So here we are about a year later. And like you said, yeah, there's been really rough times, but again, th those pivots, we found some real gems in there. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let me see, Britt, what about you? What challenges do you want to share that you've, you've had to deal with? Well, Lita, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go deep for a second. Yes. When I first started my business, I was a virtual assistant. That was the service that I offered. And when I started it, I kept thinking, okay, what do I need to look like? What do I need to sound like? And I'm looking online and I'm like, okay, that's what I need to look like. That's what I need to sound like. Okay. This is how my service needs to be set up. And was I satisfied? Again, no, wow. <laughs> I wasn't. And, um, I started digging, digging deep. And the answer was that I need to be authentic. Yes. Um, and authenticity is extremely important in business. Um, your, your audience, your clients, they know when you're not being authentic, when you're not being your true self. And you'll see the challenges come up <laughs> when you know, you, you're kind of lost, you're stuck. And as soon as I got unstuck and I'm like, this is how I talk. This is how I look. <laughs> I love it. You're going <laughs> to love it. It was a game changer. It was a game changer for my business. Um, and I begin to attract every client every opportunity because I was nothing other than myself. Mm. And so if you're not authentic, you're going to run into challenges because you're constantly trying to figure out how to be something that you're absolutely mm. not, how to look like something that you don't look mm. like, sound like someone that you're not. Woo. And so <laughs> that's it. You're going to, you, what you see is what you get. <laughs> how I talk is how I talk. Yeah. And now I am absolutely free in my business and in my life. And it feels good. Mm. Yes. And, yeah. And that's, that's one less challenge that I have. I love it. I love it. And I know, I know people right now are like mm. at this event, like, oh my goodness, you said a word again. <laughs> it's so true though. It is so true. We, we try, sometimes we try to show up as something other than ourselves and it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Wow. Whew. Oh my goodness. Okay, Stacy, you're next. Wow, that was a word. Right? And I agree with her 100%. Like yeah. be yourself. 
Yeah. Um, but for me, it was a couple of things. The first thing I would say is myself. Um, we've all been to those conferences, right? Where you do this little exercise and they say, write down, you know, something you're afraid of, you know, and some people say piranhas or dolphins or sharks or whatever. <laughs> for me, it was always, I could only come up with a couple of things. And one of them was always success. Mm. And I, I just, you know, when you come from a background of people who tell you, why, don't get too big, or why do you want to quit your job, or whoa, hiring people is hard, where are you going to get the money for that, like, and there were so many reasons I shouldn't have done it, like, to be real honest, uh, but, but I also knew I was out of options in terms of, and I think Brittany said it too, like, working in the corporate world, my skill sets didn't match you know, all the available job descriptions, you know, and I don't think I fit into any, many of those buckets, you know, so to speak. So getting out of my own way was probably, you know, a big, a, just a big thing, but who said, oh, you, you need talking about um, your passion works, like something you're passionate about, just knowing you get, you have to do it. Like, um, so I went to a conference one time and Iyanla Van Zant was the keynote speaker. This was before she had, you know, the Oprah TV shows and all of that. But the thing she said there, I mean, I literally was sitting in the audience crying and she was saying, if your dreams aren't big enough, you know, then you, then they're not going to move you to do anything. She said, if they don't make you pee in the bed, you, they're not big enough. And, and I went home with that for, for, for some months and I just decided I had to go forward with it. And then of course, um, I, I've kind of gotten out of my way, but there's still some things I need to get out of my own way. The second challenge is, <clears throat> um, like many of you guys probably, and many others who are going to be listening, who are listening to this call, is lack of capital or access to it or lack of access to it. So um, I think we all know venture money disproportionately doesn't go to women. It doesn't go to African-Americans. Uh, and not just tr venture money, but um, traditional money. Like you can't go to the bank and get a loan to start a ball small business. They'll loan you money from co for college and you don't have a job, but they won't loan you money to start a business. Hmm, how does that work? So, um, and then, you know, the traditional people say, well, start with friends and family. Hmm, hmm. So <laughs> how's that gonna work? So unfortunately, one of my fears was not debt. So I, I, I maxed out credit cards, get mortgage. I mean, I, I don't take my advice on that, but I just did what I had to do to keep the business going. And uh, so those were some of the challenges and uh, still, still, still removing myself from some of them, but at least I know the tools and strategies and tricks to kind of get through that. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, if you really believe in it and you know, this is going to be your thing and you're doing what you love and what you're passionate about, the money's gonna come. That's just how it is. It's just gonna happen. It might be years, it, it, but it's, it's gonna come. So just do it. So those were some of my challenges. And I hope, you know, having gone through that and sharing this makes people a little less afraid to jump in. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I, I love, especially the fact that you were like, it was me, you know, and, and being afraid of success, you right. know, and, and I remember um, I, I did a pivotal moments not that long ago with um, an actor and he was saying he was up for an Emmy nomination. And as he sat there waiting for them to make the announcement, he was actually afraid of winning. And he was like, what if I actually, wow. win? what does that mean? Do I now move to LA? Do I, you know, like all these things. And what if I fell and I've raised the bar and it's amazing how we can paralyze ourselves mm -hmm. by fear of actually succeeding. So I, I really appreciate that you brought that up. And of course money, you know, that that's always in there. <laughs> yeah. That can always be a challenge somewhere in, in there. Um, last but not least on this particular topic, Miss Carolyn, what challenges have you had to face in in your journey of of showing up and changing the game yes 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 so first I want to say how inspired I am right now with by all of you women and your messages that you're giving to me I'm charged up like I said yes. fired up and ready to go <laughs> um so I think probably well the biggest challenge for me is the low expectations uh, low expectations from other people and also myself. So first from other people, um, you know, I spent a lot of time in the gym when I first retired and I had people often look at me and say, this class might be a little bit too much for you. Wow. Or, you know, that's the kickboxing class, right? I mean, 
she's going to work you really hard. Like wow. I couldn't do it. Yeah. So um, that just really motivated me. <laughs> motivated me. I love it. <laughs> to work harder, stay longer, show up that little 30 year old that I can do it too. <laughs> But I also have had low expectations of myself because it's really, it's really difficult to show up my age and, you know, looking like I look when I'm in the same room at a, on a set with a five foot 11, 115 pound blonde. Yeah. Um, so one of my colleagues, former colleagues, uh, asked me when we met one day, like just accidentally, what are you up to? How is it going? And I said, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting some jobs as a senior model. And he said, what do you mean a senior model? I said, well, you know, like a model is for older people. He said, why are you a senior model? <laughs> why not just a model? Wow. Like, oh. You know what? You're right. Wow. You're right. It's like I'm trying to mitigate the looks that people might give me when I say I'm a model by saying, oh, you know, you don't really quite look like a model. Mm. So that was really the day that I decided no filter, no caveat. Yes, I'm a model. And that has really made all the difference because when I, I show up, I know who else is going to be in the photo shoot. Wow. But I hold my own. Mm. Yes. And I think the other thing that really kind of impresses the client is that um, I go deeper than just the look. Yeah. So I have interesting things to talk about or interesting perspectives and interesting background that is you know, so that my age is really kind of an asset. And so the personality and the depth of who I am yeah really kind of overcomes the comparison of the five foot 11 115 pound yeah. yeah you know yeah. I'm so glad you shared that because uh you know I think no matter where we are in our life in our season in our journey it is so easy to compare ourselves to other people you know, if we, I, like, I like that term season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it, it's so true, you know, whether, you know, it can be an age thing, maybe it's just how, you know, how we look in this season, you know, what, whatever it is, yeah. um, our, our financial status, you know, it's especially now with the world of social media, we can get lost in comparing ourselves to what we see in other people. But thank you for sharing that because mm -hmm. it really is about, owning who you are and not lowering the standard this is who I am and this is all I have to bring so I'm not worried about this other person I acknowledge it yeah you 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 know you got it going on but guess what so do I mm. I love that Miss Carolyn <laughs> thank you for sharing that and while we're on while we're talking with you let's switch to talk about some tips so we want to leave, we want to make sure we're sharing tips with those who are here at this event. So Ms. Carolyn, starting with you, what tips, additional tips, I should say, do you want to share with people that just can help them with showing up, changing the game, making history? What would you say? So, yes, I would say um, start now. Yeah. Mm. And I like to say, um, and this is the way I felt about it, um, decide what you want to do, what your passion is, claim it. Well, first of all, name it, mm. claim it, and then fame it. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I first started out, like I said, the AARP suggested it. But then once they did that, I walked into a boutique one day and they said they were doing a fashion show. And I said, you know what? I can model, I can be a model. That was naming it and claiming it. By claiming it, I had some business cards made and said, you know, this is who I am, this is what I do. And my son said, oh, great, mom, you're faking it till you make it, right? So he was absolutely right. <laughs> And then the, the, the fame it is just going out and telling people, you know, getting as many platforms as you can 
to give the message. And again, the message is being not just a model, but a role model. Mm. model. Mm. Other people can see what's possible. Wow. So, and I think I mentioned on, on the video, I just love the quote from C.S. Lewis that you may not be able to go back and change the beginning, but you can start now and change the ending. Yeah. And so just remembering that you always have like a plenitude of possibilities that you are in a position that you can choose how you want to show up. Mm, wow. And I think we might have to make sure that's in the chat. Name it, claim it, fame it. I absolutely love that. I, yeah, yeah I'm gonna have to make a t-shirt. <laughs> And y'all know I will. <laughs> okay. I get I get part of the proceeds. Miss yes. <laughs> Carolyn said, you ain't profiting off of my, my tagline. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, that's that's really good. I, I like that. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, what about you, Nia? What tips do you want to uh, share with people about showing up, changing the game, changing history? Miss Kara, I, I love that. That was so awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm like going to write that on my wall. I, I promise not to trademark it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. But yeah, um, like I, I always say, never stop starting. There's mm. going to be so many times when there's pitfalls. You're going to um, not have the money because you need to pay a bill. Instead, um, of buying inventory or uh, shipping um, your orders out or whatever it may be. Um, pull all your resources together and don't stop. Just don't stop. Um, I know uh, we mentioned venture capital um, and also um, minorities um, being able to receive uh, funds to start their businesses. Um, and I'm also, I'm a nine to five entrepreneur. So I also work, yeah. but I work for a startup. It's called Eureka. And our goal is to um, make minority owned businesses attractive to venture capitalists, mm. attractive to those people who um, are looking for um, companies to invest in. Um, and again, it's eureka.biz. You can use the code word uh, go Eureka, and it's spelled U R E E K A, um, to sign up for a free membership. And there are so many resources that we give out um, to help businesses lay a foundation and then build so that they can um, become attractive to um, venture capitalists, uh, angel investors, um, you know, people who are seeking to invest. And, and our panel right here, um, Black women, we are the largest group opening, you know, businesses and, and being entrepreneurs. Like, I mean, we are it right now. So the thing is, is that we can lean on each other. Um, we can network with each other. We can say our highs and our lows without embarrassment Ooh. and be going. So never stop starting. Always start. You always have to start because there, there's always going to be a pitfall. Oh my goodness. And we're going to make sure to put that, your, the company name in the chat as well, because I'm sure all of us want to check that out. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And never stop starting. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. That's another one that is just, because it's true. So many things come up, right? And it's like, okay. And like you said, don't be embarrassed about the highs and the lows. Mm that's all this thing was smoking because i was like Ooh, that's, that, you, that's a fire point right there so many, I, I say a, a entrepreneurship is going to make me bipolar because in the same day <laughs> you like, will. i'm so happy this happened and yes. I'm, like, I'm so sad this happened like in the same day so yes. i mean that is the, that's the nature of it <laughs> So true. oh my goodness so true oh goodness 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 okay great you're next which what what are you adding about uh tips for showing up yes and Lita I first must say Nia I absolutely love that I'm gonna write that in my journal and I'm gonna take it and run with it thank you for that right um <laughs> a few tips that I have 
I have three tips. Write these down, everybody. The first one is to find your tribe. Mm. And the people who inspire you and cheer for you, hold on to them really, really close. Like you ladies, I love you and I thank you for cheering me on and encouraging me. You know, you're my tribe, my ancestors. They are my tribe. Spirit is my tribe that's lifting me up. So I thank them as well. The second thing, educate yourself. Never stop learning, never stop researching. You can always sharpen your skill. You can always improve. So never say, oh, I don't know how to do this. Mm. Oh, you do, you will. You will learn. <laughs> Bro, I, I didn't mean to yell at y'all. <laughs> you know, just don't stop. And the third thing is don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to innovate. If it, you're scared, so what? You don't have no mm. money, so what? Write this down. Do it anyway. Woo! Mm. Do it anyway. Oh, I've never seen this before. So what? Do it anyway. I don't have the money. So what? Find a way. Mm. I don't have the time. Make the time. Do it anyway. Yes. And see see the things that you want not come to you. Do it anyway. I can Y'all, this is, this is a lot. This, y'all, y'all <laughs> like this thing on fire. Yeah, yeah. I, and burning yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> Britt said get your paper pen out write it down look don't even don't forget don't even worry about what's in the chat get your pen and paper write this down <laughs> look at it every day yes oh my goodness I love it I love it all right Stacy look I know the ladies have have left the mic smoking what you got <laughs> smoking 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 there's nothing left to add especially after Brittany just yelled at all of us and said just get it done no this was awesome this was awesome Brittany Nia Miss Carol it was just amazing I the only thing I can add to it is is a combination of what they've all said as I always say take the leap and build your wings on the way down just take the leap just do it there'll be always be a reason not to do it but just do it anyway and I think I echo the words of the previous ones it's just been such a wonderful journey and a way will be made if it's if it's meant for you you will get what's meant to be yours whether it's in business and life and anything else so just do it oh oh my goodness well you know what it's perfect time for our last sponsor break because i need to cool things off around here (laughs) so we'll take our last sponsor break when we come back we're going to just close it out with our final words from each one of us so we'll be right back check out these sponsors we're so appreciative of them so we'll be right back Brought to you by Gentara Skincare. Also, Virginia Black Business Directory. And Pivotal Moments with Lilita YouTube series. And we are back. Oh my goodness. I am loving this event. I, I know you all are enjoying it as well. Can't wait to to talk after for those who have uh, VIP tickets and who are hanging out afterwards. Um, If you did not get a VIP ticket beforehand, um, we'll see what we can work out because I'm sure after seeing this, you probably want to talk even more with these ladies. So just hang out afterwards so that uh, we can chat with you all a little bit more. So we are down to our final last words of encouragement for women showing up, changing the game, making history. So I'm gonna start with Miss Carolyn. Miss Carolyn, what final words do you wanna leave with our, our ladies, our, our, our people, whoever is at this event right now, what final words do you wanna leave? Yes, so um, I think there's really never been a time, um, a better time for women right now We have the power to live the lives we want to live, choose to be who we want to be, to be authentic. And in the words of RuPaul, who I love, it's like if you have the power to influence how people perceive you and what you accomplish in life, I mean, why not take advantage of that? I just read, this uh, statistic from global women, that women, as you know, represent about 50% of the population in the world, but we do two thirds of the work. Mm. 
at one third of the pay mm. woo, and mm. own about one tenth of the property. So that alone should be motivation because we do have the skill, we do have the power, we do have the what there is. If countries know that if they want to improve their economic status, what you do is you give the decision-making and the financial resources to women. So we have the power and we should claim the power. Ooh, mm. wow, awesome. Okay, let's see, who do we have next? Um, Stacy, what, what final words do you have? Um, again, some of the words that have been you know, given to us today are so powerful. Um, but I'll echo the sentiments, many that have already been expressed is that the, we, we ultimately have the power to do, to control our own legacies, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And if we allow others to, to determine what that's gonna be, it's gonna be small. So if we think big, act big, believe big, we'll get whatever it is that we need and what we want. So that's my advice is just go big uh, you don't have to go home, but go big, yeah. go big and dream big. And dreaming is after all a form of planning. So use those dreams, use those plans to achieve whatever it is that you want, not just for you. And I think as a, as a culture, we have to stop thinking just only about us today, but about future generations. And if we do that, it's going to change the narrative for many, many years to come. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, Nia, what do you got for us? Um, I think as women, we are natural givers and we give so much that sometimes we can lose ourselves in the process. Um, it happens all of the time. Um, I remember being a younger girl thinking, well, how could that happen? I mean, how do you lose yourself? Um, but then you live a little and then you figure, yeah, it happens. <laughs> so I think um, when it comes to women starting a business, indulging in a business, right? Because a business is like another baby. Yeah. Um, we shouldn't feel that we can't give a little bit more um, of ourselves. We're not really taken away mm -hmm. from our families or ourselves or anything else. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, just hours of a day, you know? If it's two hours that you wanna dedicate to starting something, do that, schedule it, write it down um, and balance your life out. There's no such as work-life balance, right? It, it doesn't exist. People say it sounds good, it doesn't exist, but there is an internal balance and you can schedule yourself mm -hmm. and make sure that you're, you're, write your goals down, make sure you're hitting them. Spend an hour a day, say, I'm gonna spend an hour a day to this list of goals that I have. And I'm gonna just scratch one off when I'm done with it. There's no race here, take your time. Um, so I think that we can, we can give more to ourselves by just making sure that we stay on top of ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love it. I love it. Wow. Thank you so much. All right, Britt, what you got? Well, trust God more than you fear anything. Mm. Um, Lita, don't take that. I already have it on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> trust God more than you fear anything because with God, all things are possible. And because I know that I move in a space of knowing that I can do whatever I put my mind to. And when you know that, take off, run, go for it. And when you do, don't look back unless it's to see how far you've come. Mm -hmm. Don't look back, just keep going. Keep your eyes on that life that you want, that you desire, that you absolutely deserve, that no one can take away from you. You are absolutely deserving of going to the most beautiful places and meeting the most kind people and eating the most delicious foods mm. and driving the car that you want and buying the house that you want and having the job that you want or starting the business that you want. You can absolutely do it. Just keep going towards mm. it. Don't go back. Wow. 
I love it. Oh my goodness. And I think my final, <clears throat> excuse me, words to everyone will be as women, we so many times are hard on ourselves. We think that we have to be, you know, the super wife, the super mom, the super employee, the super employer. You know, we, we, we separate all these things. And if we're not necessarily mastering one of those, then we beat ourselves up and we think, you know, something must be wrong. What am I doing? But I'll share something that was recently shared with me. And that is when you think about our brain and all the complicated things our brain is able to do at one time, breathe, <laughs> keep us alive. Uh, everything that is, is happening is based on our brain doing it right. Our brain is very complicated and it can handle so many things. So ladies, we can too. It's okay if you know, something is going wrong at home or something's going wrong on the job or you're nailing it one day, but not the next day. It's okay. We, we just like our brain can, can multifunction. We can too. give, let mm. yourself off the hook. It's mm. okay. You don't have to show up every day, nailing every single thing that you want to check off on your list. It's still, you still are amazing. You still are wonderful. Our brain is amazing. We are amazing. So let yourself off the hook. It's okay. Relax <laughs> and recognize every day that you're showing up, you, you are showing up. And that in itself is a win. Yes. So yes. that's my, my last words. I also want to say thank you to each one of you. I, I really appreciate you, the work that you're doing in the community, the businesses that you have, the way that you interact with other women, you set the bar, um, the fact that you even are able to be at this event right now, when you have so many other things just in life going on, I applaud you, I thank you, I really appreciate the effort, and, and just you showing up and changing the game and making history, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rita. This has been fabulous. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And I know there are other amazing women out there who are um, at this event and, and who you'll share this information with. And just again, recognize you're amazing. You're awesome. And I also, uh, she did not know I was going to do this, but I definitely want to thank Jasmine Bull of Unbelievable Events, who has made this event possible. Um, I could think I was a challenging client, <laughs> even though she told me I wasn't. So I definitely want to make sure to thank her for just putting this together um, so that we could really um, just make a presence about what women are doing and feel honored and empowered and refreshed. Thank you for tuning in to the Coffee and Tea series brought to you by My Natural Me Woman. We hope you enjoyed this two-part series. To find out more empowering content, follow us at lilitaharlem.com or follow us on social media at My Natural Me Woman. We appreciate your support.